also remember the word believe. You got to keep the commandments. My next question is, who did he give the commandments to? Yeah, yeah, he commanded Moses to give to the children of Israel. Like I said, this Bible's a history book. If this history is pertaining to a certain people, it is exclusive to who? That certain people, right? Now to touch on what you stated about who Christ came for, right? This We're going to show you out of the Bible who Christ came for and who he only came for. This is out of the Bible. I, I don't need to twist nothing. I want you to tell me what it is going into, all right? Uh, give me uh, that and you ready? Read that. Call it and read it. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 24. Now, I got a question for you, Chantel. Matthew, that's in the New Testament, right? This ain't in the Old Testament. Read. But he answered and said, I am not sent but into the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Read, read, 20, read 22 first. Read 22. Verse 22. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy unto me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. So this woman, what she, it said a woman of Canaan, another nation. It didn't say a, a Israelite or an Anne. She knew that Christ was the Lord. So obviously she believed in him, right? She knew who he was, right? Read. But he answered her not a word. But Christ didn't answer her. He, you know, hey, I got, I'm, I got, I hear you. I hear you, but I got stuff to do. I hear you, though. Read. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, send her away, for she cried after us. So the disciples like, who is this lady? Who is this lady? She, the woman in Canaan. Who is she? What she want? Read. But he answered and said, I am not sent but into the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Read that again. But he answered and said, That he that answered was Christ, the Lord, our Lord and Savior. Read. I am not sent, but into the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So he said he, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. But what about the scriptures that say that anyone who believes on Christ shall be saved? Okay, we gonna explain that too. We're gonna explain that. Huh? Any uh, anyone who believe on Christ shall be saved. Cause Christ, cause remember the Lord, the Lord don't contradict itself. He's not gonna say one thing and mean another. So first and foremost, you said anyone who believes shall be saved, right? You said what? We're gonna go into what that scripture means. Cause my uh. My question is, how do you believe? How do you show your belief? We're going to see how you show how you believe. We're going to show you. You know what I want in uh, Ecclesiasticus? You ever heard of the Apocrypha before? To explain, Andre, the Apocrypha was part of the Bible all the way up into roughly the late 17, early 1800s. And the Protestant church removed it. The Protestant church removed it. So what happened as a result, you know, you heard of the scripture, there's neither Jew nor Greek in Galatians. That's not going into actual Greeks. It's actually going into the Israelites that were under Greek captivity. But they removed that because that's part of our history. It was That's part of our history. So if something is missing, there's a lot of confusion going on. But let's get into what believe means according to the Bible. Read. This is the book of Ecclesiasticus, by chapter 32, verse 24. You know. He that believeth, believeth in the Lord, taketh heed to the commandments. Hold on, read that again. He that believeth in the Lord, taketh heed to the commandments. So if I believe in the Lord, I take heed to the commandments. If I believe in the Lord, I'm going to do what the Lord says, not what man says. Right. 
But what the Lord, what the Bible says. So I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, it, it is how you live. But it's according to that, according to his way. Let's right, to his way. right. So remember, the word believe. You got to keep the commandments. My next question is, who did he give the commandments to? Yeah, yeah, he commanded Moses to give to the children of Israel. Like I said, this Bible's a history book. If this history is pertaining to a certain people, it is exclusive to who? That certain people, right? Like if I if it's Black History Month, like we got Black History Month, we got Latino Heritage Month, that history month is gonna be dedicated to who? Us, right? Now we may mention people that helped us out or whatever, but the story is always about us. Let's get into who the laws was given to. Not the word, but the laws. Psalm 78 and 5. Psalm 78 and 5. Everything that we're we dealing with, we're using the Bible to deal with it. I'm not up here. Have once anything that I said, we have not gone to the Bible. We went to the Bible every time, right? This is something that a lot of people, a lot of pastors won't do. Young men, listen up. Read. This, this is the book of Psalms. Chapter 78, verse 5. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. Hold on, read that again. For he established a testimony in Jacob. So he established a testimony in Jacob. So Jacob is us. Jacob had a uh, name changed to Israel, which means prince that has power with God. He established the testimony in all these people that you see. And if you even look further on the bottom, uh, where it says Isaiah 11 and 11, that's why I was saying we got, our people spread it out in Africa and everything. Our people is everywhere, not just here in America. So the testimony was established in us, read. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel. It said he appointed a law in Israel. So who is the laws given to? The children of Israel. So if the... Now, so young men, I got a question for y'all real quick. I want to ask everybody this question. So if I gave you something, right? It's yours, right? Is it anybody else's? If I'm your, so let's say if I'm your father, right? We all got parents, right? And I'm like, what's your name, by the way? Cliff, what's your name? So if I'm like, Cliff, all right? I bought you a new car. It's yours. How you think I'm going to fail as a father if I see somebody else driving that car? I'm going to be mad as hell, ain't I? Very, very upset. But I gave that car to you. It's nobody else's, right? That that hard-earned money that I spent for that car, that work I put in for you, it's yours and nobody else's, right? Okay, this is how God operates with us. It says he's the God of none else. He chose us. He chose us. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 7 and 6. He chose us. Andre, Andre, I need you to please, please, I need you to hear this. Because God chose you. He chose us, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and nobody else. That's right. I'm going to say that. I'm going to boldly say that because we can read it in the Bible. Read. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. I'm going to have him read it again. Remember, Andre, remember we read Deuteronomy 1 and 1? Who was, who was the work, who was Moses speaking to according to that? The Israelites, right? He is only speaking to the Israelites. So the whole book of Deuteronomy is God speaking to us. This whole Bible is God speaking to us. Read it again. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. So God said we are a holy people unto him, meaning that we separate. We're separate from everybody else. Yes, God is a separatist, if you want to be politically correct. 
God is a separatist. He chose us to be separate from everybody else. Read. The Lord thy God has chosen thee. So he chose us. He didn't choose everybody else. Read. To be a special people into himself. So if something's special, that means it's exclusive. This is my special pair of shoes, my special friend, my special whatever. It is exclusive. Read. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. And he chose us to be above all people that are upon the face of the earth. It's a tough pill to swallow, but that's why we out here to teach our people that God is the God of us and he chose us and us only to be leaders. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. 